This video shows how you can estimate margins from a bowed diagram. So the earlier videos have defined what we mean by gain and phase margins for simple feedback loops of this form here. However, you are probably beginning to realise that pen and paper or analytic computations were non-trivial in general. And what you would need if you wanted gain and phase margins for more complicated processes is some access to computing and numerical methods. So what we're going to do next is we're going to look how margins can be determined much more quickly and easily directly from the Bode diagrams. And we already know how to construct fairly accurate Bode diagrams. So if you can get the Bode diagram, then you can get the margins and you can avoid all of this paper pen exercises which we did in the previous two videos. So here are some reminders of key things. What's the phase margin? First, you find the gain crossover frequency, omega g, and basically that means find an omega such that the modulus of g of g omega is 1. And then the phase margin is given by this formula here, 180 plus the arg of g of j omega. Now, you'll note that when you're talking about Bode diagrams, solving for the modulus of g of j omega equals 1 is the same as finding the zero decibel line. What about gain margin then? Well, for the gain margin, the procedure is first to find the phase crossover frequency omega p, which means find, find an omega such so the arg of g of j omega is minus 180. Once you've done that, the gain margin is given by this formula here, 1 over the modulus of g of j omega p. And that can also be read direct from the gain plot, but we'll elaborate on that in the next slide. The key thing to remember down at the bottom is if you have a Bode diagram, these computations take a minimum of effort. As you'll see, you can do them pretty much by inspection. So remark on decibels and the gain margin. So what we've done is we've said that the gain margin is given by 1 over the modulus of g of j omega p. Now, if I think about bow diagrams, which are written in terms of decibels, then I can turn this number here into decibels. That's what I've done with this statement. I've said I want to do 20 log to the base 10 of 1 over the modulus of g of j omega p. And you'll find that gives you minus 20 log 10 of g of j omega p. Now remember the Bode diagram plots 20 log 10 g of j omega p so the only difference here is the minus sign. Okay so some simple examples if the Bode diagram was reading minus 10 decibels at obviously you'll see the specific frequency we've got here then the gain margin is plus 10 decibels. So all you're going to do is reverse the sign that you've got on the gain plot at the phase crossover frequency. So here's a keynote. If the phase crossover frequency corresponds to a gain with less than zero decibels, which means that uh, the modulus of g is less than one, then the gain margin is positive, which is usually a good thing. If the gain margin is the lift required in the Bode diagram to move the plot to zero decibels at a specified frequency. So if the gain plot was less than zero decibels, what you're actually saying is how much do I need to move it to get it to zero decibels? And you'll see all these statements are consistent with each other. What about the phase margin? So the sorts of things you need to remember. Positive phase margins typically correspond to the argument of g of j omega lying in quadrant three. They might occasionally be in quadrant four, but most often it's quadrant three. Now, quadrant 3 is from minus 90 to minus 180 degrees. So if you find that the argument of g of j omega is in that quadrant between minus 90 and minus 180 degrees, you're expecting a positive phase margin. Now, the other thing to note is a positive phase margin is read in a clockwise direction. However, a rotation from, let's say, minus 120 to minus 180 is actually a minus 60 degree rotation in terms of how complex numbers are defined, but it's plus 60 in a clockwise direction. So you need to remember that, that phase margin is defined as a clockwise movement. Now, if the gain crossover frequency corresponds to a phase 
greater than minus 180, then the phase margin is positive. And again, that's something you can just eyeball direct from the Bode diagram. And once we go into the examples, all of this will become clear. So here's the first example. You see there's a boat diagram here, and what we want to do is work out the margins from this boat diagram. So we'll start by doing the gain margin. So at the gain margin, the first thing to do was find the phase crossover frequency. Where does the phase cross the minus 180 degree line? There it is. So there is omega p. And then what you had to do is you had to find the modulus of g at that frequency. So if we follow up on the same frequency, see what we've done here, there's the modulus of g at that frequency. And remember the gain margin is how much did you have to lift this plot to make it zero decibel. So if I use a double-sided arrow, you'll see this is the gain margin. And you'll notice it's been marked with a nice thick line so you can see what it is. So you can eyeball the gain margin almost by inspection here. And this one is given you at the top here of the plot, it's 32 and a half decibels. So that's a positive phase margin. And you'll notice it's also told you the frequency down here is 3.46. Now, what about the phase margin? Well, for the phase margin, we first have to find the gain crossover frequency. So where does the gain plot? cross zero decibels and then we go down and we look at what phase have we got in that at that particular frequency. Now you remember we said if the phase was above minus 180 we're expecting a positive phase margin and there you can see minus 180 and we are above minus 180 and the distance above is the phase margin. So there we can mark the phase margin very, very easily. And just as a reminder, this bit in here is, of course, quadrant 3, between minus 180 and minus 180. So we're reading it where we expect. Some examples, then, to go through without the markings. So estimate the margins from the following bode. So if we start with the gain margin, what we have to do is say, where do we cross the minus 180 degree line? And this is there. So you simply look at the phase diagram and say, where does it cross minus 180? You then go up at this frequency, find the corresponding gain, and then the distance below the 0 dB line is the gain margin. So you'll see how easy that is. No difficult calculation at all. And in this particular case, we're probably talking about something like 12 decibels. Now, usually an approximate answer within 10-20% is more than good enough for these types of calculations. Now, what about the phase margin? Well, the first thing we do is find the gain crossover frequency, which is where the gain crosses the zero decibel line. We follow that frequency down to the phase plot, and then we say, how far is this above the minus 180 degree line? And there is your phase margin which in this particular case, um, where do you think that is? About minus 150 probably. So we're talking, oh sorry, not, I mean minus 120, we're talking of the order of 60 degrees here, probably. Another example, estimate the margins from this, and we'll do it a lot more quickly now, now that you know the steps. So we find the phase crossover frequency, we run that up, and then we simply mark how much would we uplift that to get it to zero decibels. And there is the gain margin. Now if I want the phase margin, I find the gain crossover frequency. So where do I cross zero decibels? I run that down, find the phase plot, and say how much is that above the minus 180 degree line? And there's the phase margin. And you'll see we get this classic shape, which has the gain margin on the right and the phase margin on the left. Now that is a fairly typical shape that you would expect. For a system which is open loop stable, this is the sort of diagram you would expect, that you're calculating the phase margin on the left and the gain margin on the right. 
If that's not the case, you're probably closed loop unstable. So if you haven't got this classic structure, the first thing you do is you put question marks in your head and say, hmm, I need to check this. Am I likely to be closed loop unstable? Is there something gone wrong? Okay, so it's a very easy sort of check for gross errors. Have I got this sort of structure? So here's an example, which perhaps would catch you out then. So if you look here at the phase crossover frequency, here it is. And then I'll run up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop when I get to the zero decibels line, because you see I've actually got to move. I've got to move down to get to zero decibels. So in other words, the gain margin is negative. Because you remember, it's how much am I moving this gain plot to get it to zero decibels. And now I'm moving it down. So it's a negative gain margin. And normally, negative gain margins are associated with closed loop instability. So I've got to move the gain down. I'm probably closed loop unstable. That's if the system is open loop stable. If you have an um, open loop unstable process, then different rules apply. Now, what about the phase margin? Again, I, f I find the gain crossover frequency. I run that frequency down. I get to the minus 180 degree line. And again, what do you notice? The phase margin's down here, but I'm now below minus 180 degrees, and therefore I have a negative phase margin. So you'll remember the guideline was for a positive phase margin, you had to be in quadrant three. But we're not. We're calculating the phase margin in quadrant two. So we're expecting this to say we're closed loop unstable. And if you look at the pattern, you'll see here we've calculated phase margin on the right and gain margin on the left. And so because we've swapped the order, it's indicating we're probably closed loop unstable. Now, finally, you should be able to check your work with MATLAB. And there are a number of tools you can use to find margins on MATLAB. You can just create the boat diagrams and do it as we've done it here manually. Draw the lines in yourself and work out the margins. There's a file, margin.m, provided in Bode, which actually does all the work for you. So we'll demonstrate that. It shows you the margins, it draws these lines, and it also gives you the numerical answers. And finally, of course, you could also use CISO tool, which shows the margins and the crossover frequencies on the main boat diagram plot. So we'll illustrate each of these now. So if I just move to MATLAB, there we go. And then if we just open up the other window. So what I'm going to do first is enter my three systems, which we've done here. There's the three systems. And first, we'll start by doing margin G. Right, so if I find that plot, there it is. So you can see if I do margin G, you'll notice it's show me these vertical lines at the gain and phase crossover frequencies. And it's also given me these solid lines in here to mark the margins. You also see if you look at the top toolbar here, it's given me the answers. The gain margin, 6 decibels, calculated at 1 radian per second. The phase margin, 21 degrees, calculated at 0.682 radians per second. And those frequencies obviously correspond to the frequencies of these vertical lines. If I do the second example, just so we can see, and again, you'll see the vertical lines are placed in there for you, the solid bits to indicate the margins, and we've got some slightly different answers here. Six decibels, but a different frequency, 27 degrees, different frequency. And if I look at the last one, G3, and this one is the example with negative margins. You can see that we have to lift the phase plot up or move the gain plot down. And you look at the margins, you'll see the gain margin minus 10 decibels, or the phase margin minus 37.8 degrees. Now, if you actually want the numbers in the MATLAB workspace, you can actually ask for them using a command like this one here. You'll see gain margin, phase margin, phase crossover frequency, gain crossover frequency. So if I run that one, and you'll see, there you go, the numbers are given out for you. The only thing you need to be wary of is the gain margin is given as a number, not as decibels. So in this case, the gain margin is 2. The phase margin is given in degrees, not in radians. And I can, of course, use the same statement for the other examples.
Now finally, we suggested that you might want to use CISO tool. Now I didn't set this up earlier, which perhaps I should, but this is how you run it. You type CISO tool, and then if you want a shortcut to get the system in, you put brackets G, and the system will go straight in. So we don't want that. So we'll bring this across. Okay, now I don't think we'll need any of these things at the moment. So if you look at the main CISO tool window, here it is, you'll notice the boat diagram is this right-hand one, and you'll see again it's marked the gain and phase crossover frequencies and the gain and phase margins. So down here you'll see the phase margin marked because we're in quadrant three. This um, purple, oh, sorry, brown blob is where we've done it, and the gain margin in this plot up here. Now I can change the gain and see how these margins change. So if I go compensator editor, if I for example go two and you see the plots move and the margins change. The margins have gone to zero there. I could put four and the margins have changed. Shall we just um, squeeze this over here? So you'll, you'll see Caesar tool is nice because as you change the gain it updates these margin calculations for you so you can see what's going on. Now for this one we need a smaller K let's say something like 0.5 and there the margins are now very easy to read nice and big. Now just as a by the by you can actually change the margins in CISO tool directly. If you take the cursor, as you see I've got here, and place it over the game plot, you'll see it turns into a hand. If you then left click on your mouse, the hand grabs the line, and now we can move the line up and down. And you'll see as I move the line down, can you see the margins are changing? And that's because as I move this line up and down, the gain crossover frequency changes because the gain crossover frequency changes, the phase margin changes. So that's quite a useful tool if you've got an idea of what sort of phase margin you want. You can just grab this line and move it up and down. And then if you want to know what compensator you've actually put in, go to this compensator window and you'll see I've put in 0 0.073262. So some conclusions. We've shown how to determine gain and phase margins from both diagrams. And the mechanism is find the gain and phase crossover frequencies. And then you draw vertical lines to the other bow plot at these frequencies and determine the margins. So you'll notice we use the gain crossover frequency, which is from the gain plot, in order to calculate the phase margin from the phase plot and so on. We've also demonstrated how MATLAB tools can commute and illustrate these margins automatically and very quickly. What we need to do next is look at design, that is how can we use margins to underpin feedback 